healing, prosperity, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us now. It's your season. It's your time. Hear and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the One Touch Ministry broadcast right here on the Daily Gospel Network. This is my wife, Prophetess <laughs> Naditra Young. She's in the house, and I know that you guys had an amazing, amazing word last week. And I'm here to tell you that, well, I'm preaching this week, but anyway. <laughs> Greet the people, honey. <laughs> well, this is Pastor Shannon, my amazing husband, and I know that God has given him a word for you today. And I know it's going to bless your life, turn your life around, and, and do some really magnificent things inside of you. Absolutely. And so then, hey, I want to and, um, just let you guys know that if you miss any of our broadcasts, yes. you can go on our YouTube channel. Come on, y'all. And you can actually view every single daily gospel network video that come we on, have done. And we're actually coming up on almost a year and a little bit. I know. And I'm so, so it's going to be so amazing. <laughs> so we have some amazing things for you lined up. Make sure that you get in contact with my wife. She is the master life coach. She's ready to fix your life. She's ready to fix it, y'all. <laughs> so get in contact with us. Contact with Jesus us. is going to fix your life. <laughs> At Win Academy. Uh, make sure that you just get in contact with us because yes. we do some counseling and some other things yes. along those lines. And anything else before we go into today's message? Um, I just want to let you know that the number is one eight four four. You win because once again, we want you to remember that you will win when you call Win Academy. God bless you. Amen. We want to share with you, yeah, in your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives. Oh, one touch in our streets. We're here for you right now. Everyone, thank you again so much for tuning in to the One Touch Ministry broadcast where we definitely believe in touching hearts and changing lives. And again, I am Pastor Shannon. And on today, I really believe that God has a word for you on this Friday afternoon. I'm so glad that you um, decided to join us today. So let's begin in a quick word of prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for these your people, oh God. Father God, I pray right now that in the matchless name of Jesus, that you will send your word, oh God. That Father God, to bring peace and understanding right now in the matchless name of Jesus. Now, right there in your living rooms, I just need for you to give God a great shout, a great hallelujah for what he's going to do for you in your life on today. Now on today I'm going to use as my scripture reference the book of Acts chapter 27 and I'm going to begin at verse 23. Now it says here, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, the angel of God, who I am and I and whom I serve saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given 
of the all them that sail with thee. Uh, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. And so on today, I want to just focus on, on one part of this scripture reference um, in verse 25. Verse 25 says, uh, Wherefore, sir, in the King James Version, it says, Be of good cheer, for I believe God. And on today, I want to talk to you briefly about I believe God. Now, you just need to be able to, uh, if you have someone in the living room with you, if you have someone near you, I need you just to say to them, I believe God. As a matter of fact, you may want to call somebody. You may want to text somebody briefly. You may want to pull out your cell phone, go to Facebook, and just say, I believe God. So, on today, I come into agreement with the prophets of old who saw God perform signs, miracles, and wonders. Throughout the Bible, we hear and we see miracles that Jesus himself said, greater works shall you do. And as I look in today's generation, I say, what has happened to the signs? What has happened to the miracles? What has happened to wonders? Where is the church and the body of Christ at with these signs, miracles, and wonders? So, let me just look back uh, on a few things here. Let me just take a look back on some of the prophets of old. Let's look at Moses. Moses, who was, in my eyes, the greatest pastor that ever helped deliver people from out of Egypt. Uh, he pastored over millions of people, and he led them out of captivity, out of Egypt. Now, mind you, you have to remember is that God had not spoke in 400 years. For 400 years, people were crying out to God. The children of Israel were crying out to God, saying, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us. But God did not speak a word. Let me just encourage someone on today that right now, maybe God has not spoken a word to you in a while. But God has said that he's getting ready to send you a deliverer. And so what ended up happening is that God called Moses. And when God called Moses uh, to uh, set go set the people free, you know, tell Pharaoh, let my people go, let my people go, let my people go. Certain things began to happen uh, to lead Pharaoh to say, you know what? Your God is God and I'm going to let the people go. And so the people left out of Egypt, and not only did they leave out of Egypt, they left out of Egypt rich. The Bible says that their shoes didn't wear out, that they left with all kinds of things. And they, they, hey, God really blessed them coming out of Egypt. And as they were journeying to where God had promised them, they had got, uh, they had got to the Red Sea. And Pharaoh was on their back. And so then they began to murmur and complain. And they began to say, Moses, did you lead us out here to die? And Moses lifted up his staff. And I'm giving you guys the Shannon Young translation here. But he lifted up his staff. He said, I believe God and see the salvation of the Lord. On today, I want to encourage you on today. You may seem like that you're trapped between your doom and your destiny. You may feel like that you have the red seat in front of you and Pharaoh's army right behind you. And maybe you're lacking faith in God right now. But God is saying to you to declare, I believe God. 
I believe God is going to do some miracles. I believe God is going to do some signs and wonders. He's going to perform something for me today. Somebody needs to shout in your living room today. God's going to do it. You have to know that only God can do the miracle that he's looking for you to do right now, this time in this season. I believe that this is your time. This is your season for your thing from your God. Again, I come into alignment with the uh, prophets of old. And I look at the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know uh, the plans that I have for you, save the Lord. Plans to plans of peace and not of evil. Uh, plans to give you hope and an expected future. And so right now, God is having me to encourage you on today that he already know the plans that he has for you. He already know that you're going through in your house. He already know that you're going through in your job. But these things are not for evil purposes. He said they're actually um, going to give you peace for he knows the plans that, I, that he has for you. And you have to rest assured that on this day that you have to believe God that, hey, that God is going to give me peace in this situation. That God is going to give me some supernatural understanding in this situation. And he says that there is an expected end. God has an expected end for you. It may not seem like that God has anything lined up for you. And it may seem like that, you know, God is not going to work out situations for you. But God is saying to me to tell you today that you have to believe him for every single thing in your life. Signs, miracles, and wonders shall follow them that believe. You have to believe that God is going to perform a miracle for you in life. And so even on today, as I was fellowshipping with a few people and uh, <clears throat> one of the elders at my previous church, I began to tell him <clears throat> that I was looking for a video where at our previous church that we served at together. Now, mind you, I'm on the camera. I'm seeing this a miracle being performed right in front of my eyes. And what ended up happening is that uh, the elder of the church, the pastor of the church actually said, hey, come on over here. I knew that you grew up <clears throat> um, allowing, uh, seeing and witnessing signs, miracles, and wonders to take place in your life. And that you have supernatural faith to believe that God can do it in this person's life. So it was a man right there in the church. And the man had one foot that was a shorter than the other foot. And so the elder began to come over and he reached out his arm. He took the, the man was sitting in the chair. And he, uh, as he was sitting in the chair, he began to lay hands and pray. And I began to see, again, I'm on the camera. I'm witnessing this with my very own eyes. And the man's leg <clears throat> begins to move and grow. I said, my God, signs, miracles, and wonders will come to them that believe. I remember when I saw my very first miracle. Now, that was my, I think that was like my second or third miracle, I believe, I believe I've seen. <clears throat> but in Bible college, I remember being in Bible college and I grew up in, in a Baptist church and you know a lot of Baptist people don't really uh, operate in the gifts and things like that not saying that they don't believe uh, <clears throat> but they don't uh, operate and they don't move in that vein and so what ended up happening is that I was in Bible college and it was a, a girl who was blind in one eye and what ended up happening is that um, the pastor you know, I caught her up on, on the platform. He prayed for her. And you saw it on camera that uh, her eye was white. He prayed for her, laid hands on her. She, uh, he took his hand off of her eye. And the color in her eye changed. And she screamed out, I can see. I can see. 
And the next thing I knew, I, I, I mean, I, I just fell out under the anointing. I just passed out. And some of my other Bible college students, they was just like, uh, 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 buddies was just like, yo, Shan, 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 you all right? You all right? You good? I said, I'm good. But I, I've never seen a miracle like that take place. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so one of the things in Matthew 6, no, Matthew 16 uh, it says here that when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Let me just pose a question to you really quick. Who do you say Jesus is in your life? Who do you say he is in your life? Uh, so this is going to bring about a whole nother uh, revelation, hopefully. In verse 14, he said, They said they and they said, Some say that are thou art John the Baptist, some say thou art Lysis, uh, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Uh, he said unto them, But what do you say that I am? See, a lot of times, you know, you have to know who um God really is. A lot of times you have to know who you really are. You have to know who he is to you in your life. A lot of people really don't know who God really is to them in their life. They really don't have a level of belief to believe that he is God, that he's the all-knowing and true living God. And before this time right now, it has never been revealed that Jesus was Christ the Messiah. It was never revealed. So, verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Christ means the anointed one, the holy one, the sent one. Um, it, it, it literally means that you were the one that we've been waiting for. See, there's a lot of Jewish people who believe that, and actually a lot of religions also believe this, but there's a lot of Jewish people that believe that Jesus did live but he was a great man and he was a great prophet, but he was not the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so that's why you separate between the Messianic Jewish people versus just the regular Jewish people. Because regular Jewish people, they still looking for the Messiah. They still looking for the king. But right here, it says in verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God. See, a lot of people really don't believe that Jesus Christ is actually the son of the living God. And Jesus said unto, said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. In other words, in order for you to believe in God, in order for you to believe in Jesus Christ, is something we could tell you and tell you and tell you and tell you who Jesus Christ really is. But a lot of times, Jesus has to be revealed. He has to be revealed. He has to be uncovered to you. So this is the reason why a lot of people will hear about God. And they will hear about the signs and the many things that he's done. But they would just say, oh, he was just a good guy that lived, that lived on earth. Oh, yeah, he was a great prophet that lived on earth. But they didn't have the understanding, the belief to know that Jesus Christ was actually the Messiah. The sent one, the holy one, the anointed one. Um... Actually, when, when Jesus was a kid, he went into the temple, he opened up the book, and he opened up the, the scrolls. It actually wasn't a book then, it was scrolls. And he opened up the scroll to a particular scroll in Isaiah, and it said that um, he was the anointed one to preach the gospel, and he closed the book. And he said, on this day, the word has been fulfilled. <laughs> when he said that, it was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Who is this kid talking about he's the sitting one, that he's the Christ, that he's the Messiah? That right there to them sounded like heresy. There's actually a place in the Bible that says that they were actually looking to kill Jesus Christ. And so what ended up happening is that Jesus actually 
pass through the crowd. <laughs> I like the way uh, uh, Pastor Parsley, he says, he says that God is going to give you a passing through anointing. See, there are some things that should have happened in your life, but God said that I'm going to pass through and allow you to pass through it. There's some things, some of you are supposed to end up in jail. Some of you are supposed to end up in the mental institution. Some of you are supposed to end up with drugs and alcoholism and everything else. Some of you were supposed to end up being a prostitute. But God is saying that on today that he's giving you a passing through anointing. You're going to pass through certain things. As a matter of fact, this just came to me. Um, for the remainder of 2021, he's actually going to allow you to skip <laughs> over a few things in your life. He's going to allow you to skip <clears throat> over some depression in your life that you were supposed to have. He's going to allow you to skip over some um, heartaches that you were supposed to do. He's going to allow you to skip <laughs> a couple of payments on some of those bills. He's going to allow you to skip on some of those things that you thought that the enemy meant for bad good. But God says, I'm turning it around for my good. But he said, but you have to believe me. They that believe on God and believe that he is, must believe that he is a rewarder <laughs> of them that diligently seek him. Are you seeking him? my brother are you seeking him my sister because i'm here to tell you that if you begin to pursue god pursue the things of god that he said i will reward you for your pursuit wow that's a word right there i need to write that down right there for myself he's going to reward you for your pursuit but in order for you to receive the reward you have to believe. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, because flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The, the, the name Peter means rock. So he said, upon this rock, upon this church, upon your name, I shall build my church. Ladies and gentlemen, on today, I'm here to tell you that you have to believe God because there's some things that he wants to build. And he wants to use you to be able to build his church. The Bible says that he gave some apostles, he gave some pastors, he gave some prophets, some evangelists, and some teachers for the edifying and the building up of the saints of God. We're living right now in a generation that we're not building the saints. Let me say this. You say that you're called to be an apostle. But you don't know how to build people. So how are you going to build a church? Because that's what the apostle is called to do. If you're always tearing down your neighbor. always tearing down your brother. If you're always tearing down people. So if you're an apostle, how are you going to build this church? How are you going to edify? You have to get in alignment. You have to, if you're supposed to set order, get yourself in order first so that the people of God can rise up and be built. Let the church rise and allow the enemies to be scattered. Let God rise and the enemy be scattered. I'm here to tell you, my brother said, my sister, that we have to walk in obedience. We have to walk in the calling of God. We have to walk in believing in God. And so it says here, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
Allow God to build you up, encourage you, bring you strength on today. Because he said, if you believe in exactly who I am, he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The Bible says in Romans that there's uh, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and, and things that that's in high places uh, that, is, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, um, and I'm probably quoting that scripture wrong. I'm probably mixing in a couple of different scriptures in there. But the basis of it is that there are things that's coming at you. There is principalities and darkness and things that's coming at you. And it says here, no witch, no devil, no warlock, nothing, the gates of hell shall prevail against it. It said that if God be for us, who can be against us? I really love that song that says that if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? If our God is with us, then what can stand against it? Nothing can stand against it. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and earth. And whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. See, one of the things, so I'm not going to get through the rest of this. So you're going to have to come back. Uh, I believe my wife is giving the word next week. But next following week, I'm going to continue this message on... I believe God. But let me tell you something really quick about this binding and loosening. See, a lot of times uh, when, when a package is being delivered, when mail is being delivered, once it leaves out of your hands and it's supposed to go to another person, the mail is not delivered when it leaves your hand to go to this destination. It's only delivered when it actually gets to its destination. That's deliverance. But what happens is that a lot of times we pray for people to be set free. We pray for people to be to be loosed by the hand of bondage from the enemy. And what ends up happening is that although you've laid hands on them and although you cast the devil out of them, you bind, you bound, bound that enemy and you loosed him back into the hell from which he came from. But then God is saying, but you're going to have to uh, impart into people love, hope, joy, peace, happiness, though, and filling of the Holy Spirit. And in this, just these few moments right now, I just want to pray for you that you're going to believe God for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I thank you right now, oh God. That Father God, that those viewers that's watching me right now, God, that you will fill them and you will baptize them in your precious Holy Spirit, oh God. Father God, we know, Lord, that when we get delivered, that we have to be able to fill that void with something else. And we want to fill you, put you there, God. Father God, tell, take self off the throne of our lives and put you there, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Now on today, I want you to say that I believe God. Thank you so much, dear viewers. Looking forward to seeing you again next week. Friday, 1.30 p.m. right here on the Daily Gospel Network. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.